picked up this engine pod yesterday um, for cheap, 300 bucks. I'm going to use it to mount the engines on the back of the boat. But the way it's made is for two engines close together and we want to spread ours apart. I'm going to have to cut it in the middle and open it up. And I'm not sure if these angles are correct. I have to do some head scratching on this, but this is a start. This is our starting point. We need the engines to be five foot one apart to match the old engines. And this bracket is two foot two and a half roughly. So we're gonna cut it in half and stretch it out. angles, some aluminum angles, I'm going to weld them in here and I got to put one at the top and I'm going to cut this plate so that it's half on the new angle and half off the new angle so the new plate will have, can sit on these angles when I get them welded and I'll just have to patch all these little holes as best as possible. But then I'll put an access hole in the top, one of those little plastic things. I'll put an access hole in the new section and I'll put an access hole in the third section so there won't be any part of this pod, this uh, bracket that is not accessible to, um, it may be hard to paint but at least you can take a look down there and, and make sure nothing hard is going on with the corrosion. A little bit of progress on the first half of the motor mount. Seal this hole, added angles top and bottom, tried to plug weld some of these nasty little corners, and I don't have a good uh, bit for my pencil grinder, but I will get one. I'll grind the aluminum back to clean metal and then I can put a semi decent weld over the top. I'm not much of a welder. Now I have a good overlap where I'm going to add the plates to make this thing longer and I'll have three separate sealed compartments. That's my goal. Continuing work on the motor mounts. I'm attempting to seal the two halves that I cut apart. It's kind of a pain because they got all these weird little spots. But uh, I'm plugging along. I've got this piece cut and fit fairly well and I'm going to weld it out. And this angle is welded out. Don't need to weld the corners and do a lot of grinding in the corners and then I'm going to blast and paint the two halves and then I'm going to put them together. This is the first time I've laid out my uh, engine pod or engine bracket to actual size. My engine is going to be five feet one and a half inches apart. Boy, this thing's going to be huge. And I don't think I have enough scrap metal to make this happen. I'm going to have to buy some. Boy, this is going to be challenging. It's going to be heavy, too. I was planning on framing it with these one-inch aluminum plates. This came from an abandoned big, huge radial arm saw that somebody gave me. It was 
rusted solid been outside for 10 years but the, the uh, work surface was these one inch plates so I grabbed them now I got a use for them and they are long enough working on the uh, the motor bracket and I want access to be able to deal with the holes or the bolts going into the transom of the boat and because I rearranged this thing, I didn't have it anymore. So I bought three of these little access panels and I cut the hole for it. And I realized I've cut away a pretty good chunk of material here. So I uh, got some scrap aluminum and I made a frame, just a doubler to beat this up. It's gonna go underneath. And then I'll, I'll recut the circle and I drilled all these holes and I'm gonna put plug wells in them um, just to make this center area a little stiffer. That worked really well. I got a couple of little spots. I need to add a little bit of weld there. This one could use some more. And this one could use some more for the most part. Pretty happy with that. All right, reality sets in. Right after I made that last comment, I noticed there was a gap between the two plates where there wasn't before and I tapped it with a hammer and it fell off. So I'm assuming I need bigger holes where I can get more heat down to the um, bottom frame through the top frame. So I'm gonna try again with bigger holes. All right, we're gonna try it again. This time I drilled bigger holes and I will concentrate on getting more heat down in the middle of the hole before I start filling it. Okay, so I did it all again. This time I welded with bigger holes and I also welded around the interior. A lot of that will get cut off when I cut these sheets out with the jigsaw, but a lot of it will stay. And now it feels good. Okay, I hate to say this, but I'm going to do a little safety video. I've been cutting aluminum with uh, my skill saw and my table saw for a long time. But last week I was cutting out the, um, the the little hatch openings and in order to make it go faster I was using a skill saw to cut out lots of little pie shapes and uh, one of the pie shapes dropped and got stuck in the saw blade I guess and there was a small explosion one piece tried to go through my wrist this piece broke off the saw another piece jammed into the guard you can't see it because I beat it back out. It cracked the guard and bent it to the blade. There was a tooth bent on the blade. And all that happened in about one tenth of a second. And it scared the crap out of me. So uh, be careful about drops. If you drop a little piece of wood and it gets in the blade, it's usually not that big a deal. But when a piece of aluminum gets stuck in there, it ain't nice. We got our engine mounts back from the sandblaster yesterday. And uh, I think it's great. It's uh, kind of etched up the surface a lot, but that's got to be better for holding paint. And I have them mounted on my work table. And I'm using an aluminum angle and two aluminum uh, extruded door jams because these are very straight and very strong. Get this front surface straight. This is really the only critical surface. This has to fit the boat, the transom. The, uh, the two engines don't have to line up exactly height-wise or in and out, but this has to be very straight. So I'm going to leave these clamped, and I'm going to tack weld or start welding the frame together.
trying to make the new one inch corners fit into the existing aluminum structure. I wanted to maximize my inches of weld between the new part and the old part. And it wasn't square and it was sloped and it had bevels and I probably didn't have the right equipment. I'm sure the skill saw is not the method of choice for a fab shop. But I uh, I kept pecking at it. I tried different things. The jigsaw, the skill saw, ended up using the band, the porta band a little bit. And eventually I, uh, I got them all to fit and I got the most number of inches of weld that I could get to uh, make this thing as strong as possible and the plates will have a lot of inches of weld too when we deck it out so I think it's going to be uh, stronger in the new larger size than it was originally. Okay, so the frame pieces, the one inch plate is pretty much 100% done. What I'm going to do now is cut and tack the flat sheets. Probably have to add a brace or two depending on how they fall out. I'm not going to weld them up until we bring this whole thing to the boat and mount it. Just in case I need to bend something or tweak something, I'll be able to remove those sheets and uh, do what I need to do. Also, might need, maybe easier with the sheets off to locate all the mounting holes. So, uh, I'm going to cut the sheets, I'm going to fit them, I'm going to tack them, and then we're going home with it and put it on the boat, see what it looks like. Okay, a little piece in the back was easy. I had a piece big enough, so no splices necessary. It's checker plate material, but I'm turning the uh, bumpy side in, so the outside should be uh, fairly smooth. The bottom don't have a piece big enough but I'm going to put this one like this cut off the waist this waist will do this piece and I have a waist from the back that will do this piece I'll put an angle under this joint put an angle in the middle just for strength and I'm going to put an angle under this joint and, uh, I can weld the angles out but I'm just going to attack the plate First plate on the bottom, I got three angles under it. I got it tacked all the way around where it will be easy to grind these off. And I got holes bored so I can plug weld the middle. Might have got a little carried away on the size, but I'll get a plug weld in these. Bottom panels tacked into place. These flat panels are so much easier to work with than uh, the one inch plate trying to fit it in all those weird shapes. I'm gonna flip it over and put the top on. This is the bottom from the inside. Might be the last chance I ever get to see it. This is the inside of the bottom. And I don't know how I'm ever going to get paint underneath these angles between the checker, checker plate. If anybody has a clue, let me know. Time to wrap this video up. We will still need to um, test fit it. Weld it out, grind the wells, coat the interior and the exterior. We'll need to uh, drill the transom and seal the holes. We'll need to bolt it to the transom. We'll need to put knee brace on the interior of the transom. And we will need to um, put some backer plates on uh, the bolts so they don't crush the transom when we tighten it up. Okay, thanks for watching. Next video coming when it comes.